Now today's video is all about painting fur using different brushes as well and also some of the mistakes that people make when they paint fur. Let's make a start. So the first technique is using a replicator brush. Let me just show you how I'm going to work with this. So I'm going to load this brush up, okay? Not too overloaded though, like that. Drag it on the side of the mixing palette like so. Then I start to use this to create fine lines. Now, the good thing about the replicator brush, it's really handy, look at this lot, for creating fine lines in one go. <laughs> Very quickly building up the detail for fur. Get a bit of brown, okay? Just drag it on the side. So take some of that residual paint off the brush, first of all, and do the same with that one as well. Now, this is a really good technique for using between layers. But as you can see, it's quite effective. The only problem, with working with something like this, is that the lines are very parallel. Okay, so very parallel indeed. So I'll just add a little bit more paint there on purpose, just so you can see what I mean, look. So it's very, very liney. I can overlap these lines, but they're too even, aren't they? And that's the problem with something like this. They're far, far too even. So I'm gonna keep going just a little bit longer. Let's get a little bit more color. Let's go for the blacky brown one. Lamp black and burnt umber. Okay, gone for Raw Sienna for the first layer, then I've gone for the Burnt Umber, and this is the Lamp Black and Burnt Umber. And you can see the layers are starting to work really well. But, yeah, the lines are too parallel. So you see what I mean? If I draw a line like that, look what I mean by that look. So they're very, very liney indeed. And if you overlap them, which I like to do with fur or feathers, then you find, yeah, it's a bit like crisscross, like knots and crosses or tic-tac-toe if you wish. <laughs> We can play a game in the middle of this, can't we? <laughs> so that's one technique which works really well, but as you can see, it's a little bit too, I don't know, too straight. Now, the other one I'm gonna show you, it's when you paint fur without a background color on. The thickness of the paint depends on the depth of tone that you're after, to be honest with you. I tend not to go too thick to begin with. This is more of a milky consistency. Now you can see that without a background wash, the fur has no depth, but don't worry if you've forgotten to apply a wash, or maybe it's just too light. You can sometimes get around it, and that's by softening down the detail. Let's do that now, and see how it changes it. Okay, I'm going to lightly soften this down with a damp clean brush, very lightly, and that just knocks back that detail a little bit. And this helps to fill in those gaps with a wash of colour, which has already given the fur more depth and interest. And you can see the way that these layers are working quite well. The thing that we need to do is cover the white paper in the background. And to do that, you need to add plenty of layers over the top. But we'll show you another technique later on, on how I'm going to achieve that as well. But when you look at this now, it's getting a little bit more layered. It's softened down the details, as you can see, compared to the first one. And the way that this has started to look fuller, a little bit deeper as well for the fur, isn't it? Just working with Burnt Umber and the mixture of Payne's Grey and Burnt Umber as well. Switching from one to the other. Overlapping the lines as I go. So think about those elongated crisscrosses, okay? So you've got a cross like that and these are going to be quite elongated. And as you can see, this has made a big difference compared to the first attempt. Now one of the problems I tend to find with some of the paintings I've seen is that when you look at the way that the tonal values go and the colours change within the fur, you do need to kind of gradually change that colour over. So for example, I'm going to use this kind of blacky brown colour we've got here in a minute. I add this into the side. Just like this lot. Popping it in. So you've got a dark side to the fur. So what I suggest you do is that when you're adding detail on like this for the darker side of the animal's fur, you want to gradually taper it out. So in this case, what tends to happen is that the lines will suddenly stop, say for example here, the darker tones, like that. And then it's too much of a two-toned image. What you need to do is put a few odd lines here and there to gradually space them out. So put all these lines in there now, as you can see kind of really fill it in, but allowing the other colours to show through. But what you do need to do is gradually come off those lines a little bit. Just put them further apart, like that. 
Okay, so the further part now. And that's going to gradually get lighter and lighter and lighter as you come away from this dark area here. So what I mean, so look how dark this section is here compared to this area here now. It's gradually getting lighter all the time. Think about the way it tapers out, the way that the colour gradually changes from dark through to light. Don't just block it off on one end like that, so you've got a bit of a line going across, then start going lighter. Just taper those marks out, space them apart a little bit further away from one another. Gradually overlap a few like this as well, so you've got some gradually overlap like that. And by doing so, you'll end up with a lighter, sort of tapered out section of the fur as well, and more of a curved feel to it at the same time. Now then, when you're working with fur, and you've got to think about the edge of an animal, okay, just got a few more lines in there, but using my size double zero brush again. The problem that I very often see is that when you get to the edge of an animal, is that the lines can be too straight. So let's just kind of demonstrate that for you there a lot. So they're very straight there, very blocky, as you can see, very, very blocky. Okay, <laughs> a bit too blocky really. So what you need to do is go from the inside out. So for me, because I'm left-handed, I've got to turn the paper around. So I'll turn that around that way. I'm going to flick out. Make sure the paint is nice and, well, nice and milky really, not too thick to be able to do this with. By flicking out the lines, look how fine these lines are. You don't want them too straight, too in line with one another. So what we need to do is overlap those lines as well. So very often, just just curling them, overlapping in places, just not too straight. You still got to follow the overall shape of the animal, of course you do. If the line's going down that way there, then you need to follow that direction. But every now and then, just go off course a little bit by overlapping those lines. And you can see by having a tapered line, give you a nice kind of finish to this, just a very fine finish as a brush tip comes away from that paper. And do it fairly quickly as well when you're doing this. If you start from the outside in, effectively what you're doing, you're starting with a dot, okay? More of a harder kind of edge like that. If you start from the inside out, so from the inside of the fur, flicking out towards the background, then you get that nice kind of tapered edge as you can see there. You start that way around, you get more of a realistic feel to the edge of that animal. Now, another one I'll show you, which I often see again, is where the lines are too thick. So far too thick on the paper. So I'm going to use a larger brush this time. This is a size four. I mean, you can get some large brushes with very decent tips on them, can't you? Very fine tips. This one's not too bad, but you know. <laughs> so let's just drag these lines through the paper first. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, this one, on purpose. And try to use the lightest of touches as well at the same time. But as you can see, even with the lightest of touches, it's not as fine as I would like it to be. Not too bad. But not as fine. Also depends, stay, also depends how well you load that brush as well. So if it's too overloaded, you find your lines are far too thick. See that? Even though I'm trying to use a very light touch, so literally two hairs of air, but I'm not quite getting there with this brush. This is why I tend to use a finer detailed brush. But you can see by doing this, the lines are far too thick. And because they're too thick, it's not going to look realistic for the firm. And that started to get there, didn't it? So remember that when you load your brush up, first of all, you can use a large brush, of course you can. I'm going to rinse it out first of all. Let's get some more blacky brown colour. Well, it's not blacky, it's Payne's grey and burnt umber. I'm going to load that one up. But I'm going to roll it as a pull away again. And I'm going to once again tap it on some kitchen roll. Okay, like that. Take a little bit of that paint off. And then what I can do... It's using barely any pressure whatsoever, and I mean barely. And you can see the effect that you get. It's actually finer, isn't it? And I can create finer lines with a barely loaded brush. So let's take some more paint off that. <laughs> how about that? Let's see how fine these lines can be now. And as you can see, I'm hardly touching the paper at all. There you go. Look how fine those lines can be. And this is with a larger brush. So yes, you can create fine lines with a larger brush. So a little tip, don't go too thick with your details, okay? Now, I've got just about enough space at the bottom here to show you my own way of painting fur, the way that I, I prefer to paint it, okay? To make it more realistic. 
The first thing I'll do is get a large brush, I'll go back to this one again. I'm going to wet this part of the paper first of all. Now when you're working with fur and you're wetting down the paper first of all, make sure you're working on a piece of paper that's been stretched or you're working on a block pad of paper as well. Okay, at least that way around, when it does buckle and twist and bend, the chances are it will dry nice and flat again afterwards. I'm going to get a different colour. Here we go. Let's go <laughs> for a little bit. Let's go for a bit of indigo first of all. And we'll put that one on one side like that. It could be a cooler part of the animal. Very often, if I'm painting, say for example, a dog, a cat, or any animal like that, very often where the light hits the fur, I see like a bit of a blue hint there as well. I'll pop that into there. Then I'm going to go for a little bit of raw rumba and we'll pop that in. Okay, a little bit lower down just to add some colour into the background. I'll pull it over there, why not? Let's go a bit wider, shall we? Let's be daring here. Blend those together. And then I'm gonna go for a little bit of my raw sienna. We'll pop that one down there, just to warm it slightly. So we've got a cool area and we've got a warmer area. Maybe even a little bit of, let's go for a little bit of burn somber down there as well, just to change it again. Now, when you really pinch into that reference photograph for your animal that you're painting, you very often see a variety of colours behind the scenes. You've really got to go into the kind of pixels on the photograph to see those. I've got a video on that. I'll pop a link on a card to the top right for you. Okay, let's get that a quick blast with the hairdryer again, and then we'll go over the top of that with some detail. Okay, first of all, I'm going to start off with my replicator brush. Take most of that paint off, so I end up with two prongs, as you can see. Sometimes I've got three, depends on how you make it, I know. <laughs> it all tends to vary. And I'll start off using this one for the basic backgrounds. I like to use this for maybe the first probably couple of layers, something like that, one or two layers. And then over the top of that, what I've got to think about is the more detailed work using our size double zero. I forgot to mention as well, you know when you're working with your wet and wet wash underneath? Okay, you've got to think about the curves as well. So we thought about the lighter area of the animal, where the sun is obviously hitting the fur. But you've got to think about the curve and the contrast underneath that fur. So by creating a darker edge, it could also help create the shape underneath that fur as well. So think about the tones that you will use for those background wash colours, those foundation wash colours, before you even make a start on working with detail. It needs to be fairly loose. You want this more to a, more to a milky consistency to begin with. Think about the length of the lines when you're working with an animal's fur. You know, sometimes if you've got a short-haired animal, it's going to be really, really fine like that. Very, very tiny lines like so. And if it's a long-haired animal, you want to overlap those lines. Okay, which is what I'm doing here. And I might just shorten them as you go a little bit higher up as well. And I'm going to change that colour slightly as well around there. Okay, let's get a few more of these details on first, and I'll come back to you in a minute. Now, if you are interested in making your very own replicator brush, I'll pop a link to the top right of the little video I've made for you. Now you can see the layers I've already got on this section around here using my replicator brush. But because my brush is just about run out of paint, this is the ideal time where you can go into the smaller areas, very light areas like that. Look. Just get them very tiny marks. Remember I said about not overloading that brush and using a barely loaded brush to get the finer details. You can do the same with this, of course you can. You know. So we're going to lessen the marks now. I'm going to make sure that these marks are very small as well, just to vary the way they look. Now this is going to get lighter around there, so what I'm going to do, just ease off these marks now with again a barely loaded brush, okay, using my replicator still, not switch to my size double zero just yet, I will do that shortly. <laughs> and just put the finest of marks, just a hint of these marks. Remember I said about, for example, this area here, you need to make sure that if you've got a dark area, you want to make sure that that dark area gradually blends out to the light area. So it doesn't just suddenly stop as dark, then suddenly goes light. You know, you very rarely get a very sharp edge on an animal. You do get them, of course you do, but very rarely. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over the top of this area down here, again with my darker mix, just to darken one side. Then like I've done before, I'll lightly soften the fur down with a damp clean brush on this side though. And then we'll add some more detail over the top. Okay, here we go. That's nice and dry. So where you can start to flick out those details I mentioned about. Remember we're showing you on that one there. 
Think about the edge of the dog or the edge of the cat, whatever you're painting, and flick out those little lines there, changing the colour a little bit here and there as well. Now notice how the way I've painted this fur, so it's going downhill. So even though I'm throwing a few sticky out ones around there, most of them are still going to follow that contour down. But gradually kind of go off course a little bit here and there. And that will give you a bit of a kind of nice finish to the edge of an animal. And the length of these lines depends obviously on the part of the animal. So for example, if we're looking at a cat or something like that, you find sometimes around the side of the face it's a little bit short, so you've got some very short lines, apart from whiskers of course. But on some animals, you find the lines are very long, so you've got the very long lines coming down like that. Barely touching the paper, remember. Tapering out those lines as you go. There you go, something like that. How's that? That's better, isn't it? Yeah. So now I can go over the top of this again, and add further details over the top using my size or zero brush, also varying the colours at the same time. Okay, change my colour back to the brown. I'm going to start to add these now over here using my size double zero. And this will kind of add a different kind of feel to it because before it was like this or like that, where it's a little bit too even, the lines. You know, so at least this way around, the lines are a little bit more separated. I'm going to flick them around, overlapping as well, keep them nice and fine. Think about the depth of tone. Think about how deep you want that fur to be. And because I'm overlapping these lines all the time, you find a lot of these details underneath will still show through, which is very important, we know that. At least that way around will have a kind of deep feel to the fur as well. So I'm going to go into the blue colour, which is just on the screen there as you can see. I'm going to add that in now, just around here to begin with. A little bit of blue. Think of those finer hairs now, I'm going to go very short. Not too many though, so I'm going to darken that blue down just a fraction shortly. Think about the cooler area of the animal. <laughs> cool. So the cooler part of the fur. Barely touching the paper. And you're going to let this intermingle, kind of spread in to the brown area as well. So you can't see where one colour starts and the other one finishes, to be honest with you. And that's what I'm trying to do here. Well, that's a Bob Ross kind of comment, isn't it? <laughs> now, what is your favourite brush that you prefer to use when you paint fur? Let me know in the comments down below. Oh, by the way, I have a playlist as well on painting fur. So I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll pop a link to the top right-hand corner for you. So you can have a look at that one after this, OK? I'll see you there.